I quit. Karen reported me to HR for it. Posted by Help I Hate Texas. I was the director of sales ops for a $40 million a year software company. Karen was on my team. We processed purchase orders. Karen had a small vehicle accident that put her in a neck brace. She also needed once weekly physical therapy appointments and had some restrictions on duties, all of which I accommodated. No issue. Despite meeting her needs, Karen decided coming into work was optional. HR noticed that she was repeatedly absent from work for three to four days at a time, multiple weeks in a row. They did not give me details, but told me documentation from her doctor did not justify all of these absences. To make matters worse, Karen would never give notice that she was going to be out, and sometimes would just no-show without ever calling, nor indicate how long she would be out. HR eventually told Karen that she needed to either attend work more regularly or get a doctor to sign off on short-term disability. This worked for me. I would rather Karen take extended time off so I could get a temp to take her responsibilities than be absent frequently with no warning. Karen's original doctor would not document a need for disability, so she found a doctor who would. She bragged to the team that she found a doc that would sign off on anything. So, Karen went on disability, and I was able to get a temp to cover her until she returned. Even though co-workers, who kept in contact, told me Karen was going to clubs and dancing and such, I didn't care. That was between her and HR. For now, at least, the work was getting done. The time period of Karen's short-term disability eventually expired. At this point, she either had to come back to work or go on long-term disability so I could replace her permanently. Karen's sign anything doctor would not give her documentation for long-term disability, so Karen grudgingly came back to work. She quickly went back to being absent all of the time. She also refused to do even the basic duties of her job. I went to HR and told them things were not working out and that I wanted to replace her. They were on board with this plan. HR brought Karen in for the talk, but Karen flipped out and said she would sue. Suddenly, HR was not on board didn't matter that Karen really had no legal standing, just the threat of a lawsuit made HR decide that it was more important to make Karen happy than to let me have a functional ops department. In one instance, I asked Karen to do purchase order review and she complained to HR about me bossing her around. I mean, I'm her boss. HR told me that I could no longer give assignments or work duties to Karen. What? When I said that was fine, as long as they let me hire someone else to do Karen's job, they refused to give me a request for a new employee. This went on for months, and Karen quickly learned that she could complain to HR about anything and get her way. You would not believe the accommodations she was given. Meanwhile, she made no effort to hide that she was not really injured anymore. She was barely coming to work, but was still getting paid. She even encouraged other team members to take advantage of this loophole that she had found. Then. One day during month-end crunch, Karen had not come in or called, so I called and asked her if she planned to work that day. It was a simple question, carefully crafted to be neutral in tone. She told HR that I had harassed her with my phone call. I got written up. So I immediately put in my two weeks notice. Not going to deal with my career being screwed up by a woman who had worked maybe six days in a month, especially when I gave 60 to 70 hours a week to the company. With me suddenly gone, the sales ops fell apart. Purchase orders were not going through. To address this emergency, a company senior VP took over sales ops until my replacement could be found. HR was certainly not going to tell this guy he could not give Karen duties, so Karen actually had to work. About a month after I quit, Karen got my home number and called me, furious that she now had to actually work. She told me she was going to report me to HR for a company I no longer worked for. And sure enough, she did exactly that. I kept in touch with members of my old team and they told me that she was laughed out of the HR office. But here is where it gets absurd. Karen called me again, cursing, screaming, and threatening me and demanded that I give her the contact information for HR at my new company. She was gonna report me to a department that had no idea who she was nor had any jurisdiction over her complaints. The stupidity was unbelievable, and I giggled at her right up until I hung up and blocked her. Last I heard, Karen was finally fired, got zero unemployment benefits, and ended up moving her and her kids in with her mom. 
How, how long, Karen, do you think that you can get away with going into work six days a month with some bull crap excuses? Like, how long does that work? It worked for a minute because HR was incompetent, and she's like, oh, this will work forever. No, no, it does not work that way. And when you get an employee who knows what they're doing, worth their salt, putting in the work, who is feeling unappreciated and just messed over, this is what happens. You call this current HR? Just, this is crazy. Way to go, OP. Karen called the police in a nail salon, posted by David Pham 268 I'm an Asian guy that works in a nail salon in the mall. On Wednesday, I had an incident with a nasty Karen. I was greeting her and she told me that she wants a gel manicure. For anyone that doesn't know, you use a UV and LED light to cure the gel to dry, takes like 30 to 60 seconds to dry. When I sat her down, she already had an attitude by sitting far from my table, crossed her legs and out of reach. I told her, uh, can you sit closer to the table so you don't have to reach? She got annoyed when I asked her. She told me she wanted OPI colors, Funny Bunny, Off-White, and Bubble Bath, Natural Pink, but she didn't know which color is white and which color is pink. When I started to do her hand, she looked at it every few seconds. In my head, maybe she just is a picky client. I should have stuck to my feeling that she is just here to get a free gel manicure, but I gave her the benefit of the doubt and continued. In my salon, if a client is too picky and you think you can't handle it, you can ask the manager to switch to someone else, but if no one can handle it, then the manager will ask them to leave, because in the end, you'll waste your time and the client just wants a free service. When I had done painted the gel nail base coat on her first hand, I told her to put it in the light, but she only put it like halfway in. So I told her, you have to put your hand in a little more so the gel can be cured and dry, but she refused. I don't want to put my hand all the way in. So I explained to her that, if you don't do it that way, it won't be dry. She told me, I did this a thousand times, I know what I'm doing. I told her, well, every gel light is different, you have to follow my instructions. So I show her, and I place her hand a little bit more inside the light, and I told her to just leave her hand like that until the light turned off, and it only needed to be one time, but she kept doing it three or four times, 30 seconds each time. After that, I told her to switch her hand, but she pretended like she didn't hear me until I asked her a third time and she raised her voice. I have to make a phone call. She called her friend and told them. She said, I didn't give him permission to touch me and he forced my hand into the light. I said, excuse me, miss, I didn't force your hand. I just placed it in the light a little bit more so that the gel can dry. I don't want to talk to you. This conversation is over. So I don't know why I continue this service. I should have stopped. When I finished painting her hands, I massaged her hands as well. After that, she asked to speak to the manager. Asked the manager to see the camera footage, but the manager told her only authorities or the police are allowed to see it. Karen said, then call the police. The manager told her to do that, and he called the police too. She stands up and she walks to the door, so I follow her, but I kept my distance because she didn't pay for her service yet. She told the police on the phone that she didn't feel safe in the salon because me and the manager were looking at her, so she has to stay outside. When a policeman came, she told him that I forced her hand into the light and she wants to press charges for assault. So he gave her a complaint form to fill out. I told him you can't let her go because she didn't pay for her service yet. And he said, don't worry, she's just going to go fill out the form in Starbucks, three doors down from the salon, and then I told him my side of the story. Thank goodness, my coworker was working on a client and they sat like six feet away so they heard our whole conversation with Karen. When I asked them to be my witnesses because Karen told the police I assaulted her, they were shocked and they told the police what had happened. Then another policeman arrived and they went to check the camera footage. They said, if I assaulted Karen, then why did she let me massage her hands in the end of the service? And it was all on Karen, she made up lies. My manager told me later, I was doing my appointment client, that the policeman went and talked to her at Starbucks and she screamed at them and caused a scene there. I was so angry that the policeman let Karen get away without paying for her full service, fault accusations and no consequences. These types of Karens will do the same to others places because the police enabled it. Should I go to the police station and press charges? I want Karen to meet justice. Oh man, OP, that is a rough one there. It looks like that she abused the shop order, like she knew that she could do this and get away with it. This would require adjusting the shop's terms and conditions and their rules to not let people do this anymore because now you see they'll take advantage of it. 
I don't know if you should go to the police station. You should want to see justice for Karen, that is for sure, especially since she assaulted you. But thankfully, it was just another Karen lie, and it looks like that things aren't going to get too crazy from this. Nice story, OP. My Karen aunt is jealous of my three-year-old cousin getting cranial surgery. Posted by Foxlover96. I can't make this crap up. I'm immobile at work, so sorry for any spelling errors. My aunt has always been a jealous and entitled creature who always tries to comb through a tragic situation to find some factor that doesn't relate to her at all to make it all about her, regardless of the situation. And if she can't find any factor, she gets mad and makes it directly known that she is the one who should be pitied. Just recently, my cousin's son had to go through a rather serious and terrifying surgery where they had to crack his skull open. He is three years old and was born after four miscarriages, so obviously the family was on pins and needles hoping for a successful surgery and a fast, painless recovery for him. Oh, except for my aunt. I'm not sure if the idea of her or her own grandson not being the one getting all the attention and positive thoughts is what threw her over the edge, despite her and her grandson being completely fine, or what, but her response was nothing short of disgusting. In the family group chat, my mom and aunt are a part of all the siblings, which I believe is about six people. My one uncle was sending updates all day as he had driven out to be there the day of his grandson's procedure. So, of course, everyone was replying anxiously for updates. Except my aunt. So, she took it upon herself to text my mom how annoying it was to constantly be receiving text messages from everyone about my cousin. My mom reminded her that this toddler was going through a super intense and possibly deadly surgery and that everyone was nervous. My aunt then made it apparent to point out that this kid always has problems when anyone brings him up. This is because my cousin was born quite a few months premature, so of course he has some issues going on. My mom was already mad at this and reminded her that if this was her grandson, she'd want everyone to give her and her son and his child nice comments and thoughts and prayers and she shouldn't be acting this way about a toddler getting surgery. My aunt's only other response was that everyone was being overdramatic about him and it wasn't that serious. At that point, I almost dang near lost it. I despise this woman with a passion and a half. I can't imagine being so self-absorbed that you tell someone that a three-year-old skull being cracked open like a coconut is overdramatic. And she wonders why nobody talks to her. Oh my goodness, I'm a dad myself, okay? And this is just not even it, man. This is the reason that people go no contact with some of their relatives, doing stuff like this. If it's not all about you, it shouldn't be anything at all, right? No, you have to have some empathy for your fellow family members if they're not doing anything wrong to you or anything. And you know what? Karen is gonna learn one day, hopefully, when something happens and things get flipped all around, she's the one who needs the help and they're not gonna give it to her. Karen, what are you doing, lady? I want it for this price, posted by Blue Ellen. These past days have been bad for me, so enjoy these two stories told to me by my coworkers about Karens who they think they are in charge of the store. Story 1. My coworker, Maddie, was busy doing the self-checkout when a lady rings up an $84 ice maker. Immediately, the Karen calls Maddie over. She says, so they said that since I got this from the top shelf, I can have it for a half off. Maddie says, uh, who said this? Karen vaguely points to the man cash registers, uh, they did. Maddie says, hmm, uh, let me check the price. And of course, it rings up for full price. Uh, Ma'am, this is coming up full price. They said I could have it half off. Maddie then goes to a cashier at the register and asks about it. Other coworkers said, oh yeah, I got it down for her, but I never said anything about half off. She can pay full price or not at all. Maddie informed the Karen who, of course, was ticked off and refused to buy it. Story 2 Now, there's retail price, what customers pay, and unit price, which is just for the store. Honestly, I never noticed it, and it plays absolutely no part in a customer's transaction. Now, usually the unit price is several cents, but, like I said, it has no bearing in a customer's transaction. But this lady saw the unit price and thought she found such an amazing loophole. Karen brings up an item that rings up for $26. She said, I know it says $26, but the unit price is 86 cents, and I want it for that price. Cashier says, no, you can't have it for the unit price. I mean, you can have it for the price that rings up. No, it's on the price tag. It says 86 cents. You have to honor it. 
the unit price is for the store, it's not for customers. The price is $26, and that's also on the tag. Karen then just devolves into a fit, causing the manager to come. He actually was so fed up with Karen that he pulled out his phone, looked up the definition of unit price, and read it out to her. She realized she was beaten after that and stormed off, not buying anything. Also had a lady who stood around for over 15 minutes to complain to a manager because there wasn't enough cashiers and she had to wait in line. Okay, first of all, Karen, if you're going to say you get something for half off when it's full price, that's a pretty big discount. And if it's just a lie, the cashiers are going to talk to each other and confirm if it's not something that they actually know is on sale. If they have questions like, how do you think you're going to get past a store who's doing the own very thing by setting the price of their own product? And for the Karen that wanted it for 86 cents, I mean, come on, like, you think you found this loophole and you're like, oh, I'm going to beat the store at their own game. It says 26 on the tag itself even, but this unit price is some magical mystery number that's under the table and nobody knows what this is, but I found it. I got the secret code, Karen conspiracy. No, you just lost the game, if you remember that old game. Karen, what are you doing? Way to go, OP. Boss Karen illegally takes our lunch, so we do this to get back at her. Click the video on your screen so you don't miss out on it, and I'll see you there.